Today, I would like to talk about what happened to Lindsay Shepherd at Wilfrid Laurier University in Canada. Many of you may have heard of what happened to her already, but if you follow the mainstream media, it is entirely possible that you've heard absolutely nothing. So, what I would like to do is first introduce what happened to uh, Lindsay Shepherd, and then we can discuss its implications and meanings, and also what I would say would be the ideal for free debate in university. However, as you can tell from the title, it's called Poisoning the Well, and I do not wish to do this myself. So first, let's objectively look at what happened, and then we can move on. I'm not sure exactly when it happened, but it may have been a couple of weeks ago, or slightly beforehand. But Lindsay Shepherd is a TA, or teacher assistant, at Wilfrid Laurier University in Canada. And her job is to lead seminars for students, uh, following on from lectures by lecturers such as Nathan Rabucana. And in one particular lecture, or seminar rather, her job was to introduce gendered pronouns. And she did what any teacher in the modern day seminar would do. She introduced the notion of gendered pronouns, got her students to practice them by speaking and writing and understanding. And that sounds quite normal. And to be honest with you, my only complaint about that would be that it sounds like something uh, a student should be learning in pre-university education rather than in university. It sounds a bit too basic. Now, what she then did was what I would I would have done in a similar circumstance would be to introduce a few counterpoints. So, for example, she introduced a five-minute clip by Jordan Peterson, who is a quite famous and notorious uh thinker on certain issues, men's rights, Christianity, uh, use of gender pronouns. So in this case, she took a section of a show from Canadian TV, which is probably about 45 minutes long. And in the clip, Jordan Peterson talks about C-18, I think, or C-16, C-16 bill, which was designed in Canada to force people to use the right gender, or what they consider to be the right gender pronouns based on the idea of gender as a social construct, rather than as a biological entity. Now, what she did was she introduced the five-minute clip just by saying, here's a different opinion. Then she got the students to watch the clip and then have a free discussion on the clip and the views. Some were in favour of gender pronouns, some were against it, some were in favour of enforcing laws, some were against enforcing laws. There was a good-natured debate And as far as she was concerned, that was the end of it. However, she was then hauled before a tribunal of three lecturers, led by Nathan Rambucana, who alleged that one or more students, and they never told her how many, made a complaint about the lecture, or the seminar, sorry. And again, they never said what the complaint was. But they said to her that she had basically been transphobic by showing Jordan Peterson's video, that she had encouraged gender-based violence and had broken the law codes of Ontario. Now, that's not all. They then berated her and were talking at her and beating her down and trying to destroy her opinions and ideas. And they made her cry. And you can listen to the clip. It's about 40 minutes long. It's on YouTube. I will try and link to it if I can. It's pretty hard stuff to listen to. And the worst bit is, Lindsay Shepard did nothing wrong. She introduced a dissenting opinion in the right way. She did not poison the well, which is to say she did not say, this is rubbish, before letting them listen to it. She let them listen to it, and she let them discuss it themselves. She treated her 18-plus-year-old students as adults. And Ram Bukana and the others did not like this one jot, and they did not like it for several reasons. The first reason is, Jordan Peterson for them is a persona non grata. He is the kind of person they do not want to have shared at all in their seminars or lectures. They were against the sharing of a different opinion on this topic. They were against her not instilling in the students' minds how they should think about Peterson's views before Peterson had said them which is what poison the well means. So she didn't say this guy is a racist, therefore don't uh, agree with what he says. She just let them listen to it and make up their own minds. 
And as Ram Prakash said, that's part of the problem. He doesn't want them to think for themselves. He, he wants them to think the way he thinks. Now, it's quite nasty. And in the end, they basically made her cry, as I said. And they said to her that the way she did it was wrong, even though she did it perfectly right. And they said, we are going to, from now on, pre-approve your lectures. So you have to submit to us before the class what you're going to teach and how you're going to teach it. And you're never going to use Jordan Peterson's work again. And this reminds me of uh, how the Chinese government deals with music. You might think punk and rap and heavy metal are against the system, rebellious, do whatever we want types of music. But in China, and apologies for my cold, by the way, in China, you have to get state approval for all your lyrics and your music. So you can't write an FU to the Chinese government in Chinese music because they will probably put you in prison at worst or at best. They will say, no, you can't publish this. And it's a bit like that. If you have a TA or a lecturer, you have to trust them to be able to do their jobs properly. And not only that, she did do her job properly. It's Rabu Kana and his ilk who are in the wrong because they fundamentally either don't understand education or they don't like it. Education is not there to indoctrinate. That's indoctrination. Hence the term. Education is teaching children and adults how to learn and to enjoy learning, and to learn throughout your lives. You don't have to go to university to have a firm and fundamental understanding of a subject, especially today. You can teach yourself a lot. I have a university education in ancient history and archaeology, and I have taught myself many other things. It's easy to do if you work hard, you keep your mind open. And university should be a place where there is fundamental questioning of all ideas, all of them. You, By questioning an idea, you are testing the idea, you are proving the idea, you're augmenting the idea, or you are disproving the idea. And all the ideologies which Ram Bukhana and his ilk stand up for, such as social justice, Marxism, fascism, feminism, socialism, all those kind of things which are very close together, in fact, some see them as different heads of the same hydra, are easily disproved by open and free debate. Someone proposes the idea, someone disagrees with the idea, and you come up with a synthesis at the end, or you agree to disagree. But you must agree to the fundamental principle of freedom of debate and freedom of expression. If you can't have those things, you cannot challenge. You can't have a society that gets better, who looks to make humanity better, who looks to make society better, living conditions better, everything. If you just assume that one idea is always correct, you will end up in an echo chamber, it will just amplify the idea, it will get worse and worse and worse. We need to have that freedom of debate within university. And Lindsay Shepherd did it right. She stood up for the right way to teach, which is to show different opinions, get some free debate and then all the students learn. It is not unsafe or threatening to have a different opinion and to debate it. It really isn't. And we've got to stop this idiocy whereby there are safe spaces, there are no-go subjects, there is no platforming. These are all against the liberal Western traditions, you know, the classic Western traditions. They're against all of those things, and we must... Uh, try to re resist these things and to have free speech and free debate wherever we can, even if it's on little YouTube channels with virtually no viewers. I think I account for nearly all the views of my videos so far. We just have to have these things for the sake of society and for the sake of all of us. And I'm glad that Lindsay Shepherd is standing up for the right way of doing things. I'm glad she recorded the 40-minute interrogation and she put it out there. Because the University have apologised with a non-apology. Rambukan has apologised with a worse apology. It's smooth, it's slick, it makes it look like he's understood. But you know he hasn't. You can see in his apology, he admits he's a social justice warrior. And that's all he's doing. He's advancing and indoctrinating. He admits it in his apology. Yet, what he takes away from 
the whole affair. It's not stop being a douchebag. It's not be nice, which is def- you know and honourable. It's not treat your opponent well. None of those good things. It's be sneakier, learn how to manage it better, and learn to control better, and learn to indoctrinate better in such a way that you don't end up in this circumstance. That's taking away the wrong thing. He has not learned, probably will not learn. Ram Bukhanas probably should be sacked from his job if he can be. He's just, it's just wrong. But uh, what we can also take away from this is that, as many others have said, current students should just get their degrees because if they stand up for the right things, faculty will punish them. They will downmark them. They will kick them out or bullying them into leave. We've seen it all over the place. But what you can do after you graduate, because they can't take that degree away from you, is get into the system and stand up to them there. Become a lecturer, stand up for the right things, like uh, Lindsay Shepherd has done. Lindsay Shepherd agrees with them on gender pronouns, but she also holds the correct values of education. And for that, I'm grateful to her. And so we should all be. All right, that's my rant. I'm going to stop now. Thank you.